Welcome back to Afternoon Express. This fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Now, as we continue to celebrate powerful businesswomen, we are joined now by Judy, uh, Dr. Judy Dlamini, who qualified as a doctor in 1985. She started as a family practitioner, then moved her way to occupa uh, occupational health for companies, where she developed a keen passion for business. She went on to complete her MBA and she obtained a doctorate in business leadership. She's now written a book titled Equal But Different, which is aimed at people across gender, race and social class who want advice on personal strategies and tactics to succeed in business and life. Well, welcome to the, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank Do you know how often we interview people who start off as doctors? Like you study for seven years and then the minute they qualify, they go, no, sorry, like, not, not for not me. For me. <laughs> no, 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 I was better behaved than that. Yeah. I actually practiced for 13 years. Wow. Uh, so the taxpayer's money wasn't wasted. <laughs> not that people who don't waste taxpayer's money. <laughs> But uh, I loved it. I actually wanted to be a doctor for four. Yeah. So it's uh, maybe my only love in terms of career. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, things changed and I lost the passion. Yeah. 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 And, and then, then why the change? Like, why did you decide yeah. to go the direction that you did? You know, so many things influence the change in direction. Uh, sometimes you think you know and uh, you're never really 100% sure. But the only thing I can say is that I was affected by crime. I had a practice in the township and uh, you know going to my practice was just like going from home to home uh, the interaction i had with patients it was like my extended family i love that and then i was actually affected by crime robbed at gunpoint outside my practice mm. and something in me died but also during those days you know there was this uh, new disease hiv um, HIV AIDS that didn't have any antiretroviral uh, remedy at the time and you just I just remember you'd come out of the practice just feeling so helpless wow. yeah. because you didn't have an answer you didn't have a solution obviously obviously things have changed like you can actually have chronic medication to assist yeah. you so I think it's a combination of things that actually made me feel because mm -hmm. I had to move from the township I had a practice in town and uh, you know when i had a practice in the township i felt i was needed i felt i was making mm -hmm. a difference you know the role model in the community chatting to high school students mm -hmm. you go to town you know you drive home and be like you know you only see people with flu and uh, you just say if i didn't <laughs> First come to work, problems <laughs> you, you know it's just you know and i'm like surely there's more to life than this yeah. yeah yeah so i just had to I study want to discuss further. equal then, but different why the desire and why did you feel that there was a need for it because i think it's it was definitely a need yeah. i want was to this, know what you so thought. you went on to study your phd before <clears throat> writing the book was yes. that as a result of you studying business leadership exactly. okay exactly so the book is the result of the thesis okay and uh, you know what actually triggered the thought is two things one i listen to these women and when i listen to their stories their journeys actually it made me think about my own journey uh, it actually answered some of the questions that i had that were not answered as to why did i take that decision when i did so it was such a, a personal journey to listen to them and i'm so grateful to, to them to, for opening their lives and uh, allowing me to share their lives in the book that's the first reason the second reason is that uh, as Batsi was saying earlier on, you actually have so many young people that actually need mentorship. And there's a limited amount of time that we have because we're all so busy. And I have thought, what a way of actually accessing so many people that you'll never meet just mm -hmm. by putting down the stories, the <coughs> life journeys, not just of women, because we also have men's stories there. But uh, I'm just hoping that they will read the book and get inspired. Uh, some of the stories in the book will resonate with them. But more importantly, there is so much advice in the book that actually just assists you to chart your own life journey. One of the things that I always say to young people especially is that the first qualification you have, the first career that you choose, doesn't define who you are. Mm. It doesn't define who you will become. You can change, you know. Wow. You know, it's uh, so. I, I really hope that uh, it will change people's lives. Wow. Yeah. So, what is your thesis? What was your thesis mainly about? You know, I, uh, Bonnie, I looked at the intersection of different social identities. When you, it's an area that I like, that the equality space, 
Uh, so I did a lot of research prior to deciding on the topic of my thesis. And I realized that a lot of research is based on white middle class women from developed worlds. And then we take that information and actually Try assume apply it to you apply it to <coughs> all walks of women, yeah. different experiences, emerging markets, <coughs> wherever <coughs> else. And obviously that doesn't work. And uh, each person has different social identities at the same time. You have the social class that you started off with, whether it's working class, middle or upper. Mm. Uh, you are a certain race. Uh, and at the same time, you're a woman. So it's all those things that I am that actually, in a way, tend to define my destiny. But what you choose to do uh, with your attitude determines where you get. And uh, it's actually interesting because if you just look at the different women that are discussed in the book, uh, they have different race, they have different social identity, um, I mean, um, social class, and uh, obviously they are all women. But you'll find that the more privileged the social identity that you come from mm -hmm. in this country, if you're white, uh, the easier it is to actually reach uh, your destiny. Uh, the lesser privilege the social identity, especially African, you actually work harder. It doesn't mean you're not going to achieve it, which is quite important to know. Yeah. It just means you have to work that much harder. So the message really is that it doesn't really matter what combination your social identities are, if it's actually less perceived by the world to be less because we happen to be in the minority in the space, which is the corporate world, all it means is that you just have to work harder mm -hmm. and your attitude is, is everything. Your attitude to your work ethic, your attitude that I can, because one of the ladies in the book talks about there is this apartheid legacy that makes you feel like you see racism everywhere, which uh. becomes a problem because then you become defensive. If your attitude is I can, I have to prove to myself that I'm enough, then the mm. attitude, the way you see, you see positive energy in whatever right. space. Yes, yes, because then you don't walk around projecting exactly. that experience exactly. onto everything yeah. you encounter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, I can't so wait much. to read your book. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you so much no, for coming through you. on the show. And you know, Bonnie was sitting in the makeup room earlier and she said to Bassi, can you recommend anything good to read? This is it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you very, sure. very much. Sure. So after the break, it's time for another installment of Afternoon Explores. And today we try our hand at the traditional African art form of beading. Plus later we have some very special guests joining us in the kitchen to make some very delicious treats. <laughs> Make Mother's Day blissful. Lindor from Lindor.